Hello and welcome back to my channel. My name is Jessica Morehouse and this channel is about all things money and this is a very specific video that has been requested by a few of you. Some of you can skip right past it because it will be of no consequence to you. This video is me going through FB2 Financial Planning 2, the course that is offered through the Canadian Securities Institute. It is a course that I'm happy to say I just passed. Now you may be wondering, well, the very few of you may be wondering because I have made past videos on how to pass the Canadian Securities course and FP1, Financial Planning 1 through the CSI. And why did it take me so long between videos? The thing is, I did try my best. Eh, no, I didn't try my best. That's why I failed. Um, yeah, so I took FP2 and I failed. The reason why I failed, well, I mean, why do you ever fail? It's because you didn't study hard enough. And that's what happened. I think I got kind of cocky after passing both CC exams of my first time and then FP1 so easily. I'm like, oh, okay, I'll just give my few, you know, self a few weeks. That'll be good. Um, but I, you know, I did try, but uh, not hard enough, obviously. So cut to now, November, 2022, and it's taken me until now to, to take time to study and then pass, but I have. So in this video, I'm going to share my tips for passing FP2 for anyone who is going to take this course, because maybe you want to be a financial advisor or someone in the industry, whatever the case, I'm going to help you pass. Okay, so first and foremost, let's talk about why it's way harder. Honestly, I wouldn't say harder than the CSC exams. Those were tough exams, but at least they were broken into two where you had one textbook, one exam, one textbook, the other exam. FB2, you've got two textbooks, one exam. Not only is there two freaking meaty textbooks, one exam, 60 questions, not a lot of room for error. It's, it's, it'll take you a little bit of time. For me, I took all of October to study. So I actually did dedicate like days to uh, studying. And uh, let me show you the proof because I got really into it. So let me show you, this is, here's what we got. We've got all of those note cards. Hot tip, it is actually so helpful to go to Staples and getting these little rings, it's, it's helpful. Not only did I, go through the textbooks, highlight, make some notes in there. And then I made these note cards for things that I knew I needed to retain uh, for the, um, the exam. I also near the end, when I was in that final week of just reviewing information, I then went a little crazy and then made these little bigger kind of note cards that are just on pieces of paper. But uh, yeah, as you can see, there's, there's a good, good amount of them, but they were actually really helpful. This was my strategy, kind of new strategy of textbook first, read it. And then while reading it, make the little notes. And then when it was review week, going through all the notes. And then when there was things and I was going through the practice exams and there was things I was getting wrong still, then I made these big note cards to really memorize some stuff. And it did actually help because I got a lot of things right that I would have otherwise not gotten right. But I know what you're actually really waiting for in this video, which is what is on the exam. Now, obviously I cannot tell you what, I, cause I, I honestly just don't want to um, get in trouble, but I did take some notes right after the exam about what I remembered uh, would be important for you to memorize or review. So these are the things that I remember were on the exam, but again, I'm not telling you the answers or even the questions. These are just parts that you should definitely pay some special attention to. I should also mention, so I did this exam uh, November, 2022, right? If you were taking the exam in, uh, I think after August, 2023, Likely it's gonna be a fresh new exam. And also there is, um, I think different, I'm not sure if it's different textbooks, it might be the exact same te textbooks, but there are some updates. So if you log into your portal, make sure to check that out. There are some things, it's, it's like, you know, if you're doing it after this time, make sure to, you know, read this stuff. So that's really important. I did the, basically the 2019 version of the course and the exam. Okay, so I've written them all down on my phone. Uh, so let's go through some of the things that you're going to want to memorize. Okay, so the first thing I wrote was 
memorize CPP Canada pension plan rates for self-employed. Um, now why this is important, why I noted this down was because again, I did the exam the 2019 version. So if you're going into the exam and being like, oh yeah, I, I know what the current CPP rates are for self-employed people. Um, and FYI, I have done videos on this. Remember when you're self-employed, you have to pay the uh, employer and employee uh, parts. Um, so you're you know paying double CPP basically. Uh, in the exam, it's gonna be the 2019 rates. Okay, next, there was definitely a question about the lifetime capital gains exemption amount. I did actually talk about this in, I think my my video on whether you should be self-employed or incorporate your business. So if you, you can review that uh, part of the video, but also it's in the textbooks. But again, you're gonna have to remember what the rate is, like the amount for 2019. Again, depends on when you're taking the exam. I don't know if I got that one right because I, you know, when you're faced with numbers that are very similar, you're like, shoot, <laughs> which one is it? I, I can't remember. So that is definitely on the exam. Two other things that you need to memorize, and I definitely did make some note cards about this. All right, found it. Um, two things that were definitely on the exam. And anyway, I remember this from last time, but, and so I'm like, mm, if it's the same exam, I better know it, um, is the trainer ratio and the sharp ratio. There are questions that will require you to do those calculations. So make sure that you take the time to memorize them. They're not hard. They're really not. The trainer ratio is just portfolio return minus risk-free rate divided by beta. And the sharp ratio is simply the portfolio return minus the risk-free rate divided by standard deviation. So I remember those by, because those are identical basically, except trainer is beta and sharp ratio is standard deviation. So remember those. If you remember those, do your little things to get it in there, you'll get those right because they're really not that hard. Another formula you're going to have to memorize is the goal setting formula. Now, I feel like this came up in one of the practice exams. Definitely, they are so helpful. They really do make you think what you need to, you know, get better at. But um, I feel like it came up in one of the practice exams. It was definitely on the real exam is the goal setting formula, which is right here. Can you see, can you see this? I don't know if you can read that. I don't know. But uh, I will likely do some individual videos about some of these. That's something that I'm like, well, now in all these weird calculations, and I feel like I get questions all the time about like, how do I figure this out? And I'm like, well, now I know the formula. So anyways, memorize that. Okay, next, and I had to look this back in the textbook because I did not understand my note. Um, there was definitely a question asking about special or extraordinary expenses um, for child support. Um, yeah, it'll make a lot more sense once you get to that part in textbook two, module seven, section family law. <laughs> um, but it will ask you um, what are, you know, some of the things that are included uh, or, or, or categorized as a special extraordinary expense when it comes to child support. Did I get it right? Did we? Um, another thing is over contribution. Uh, oh yes, what happens or what are the, the consequences or the penalties if you over contribute to your TFSA and your RRSP? It's not just asking you, you know, what is the, you know, consequence? You're gonna have to calculate what the penalty is. So make sure that you know what the penalties are for over contributing to your TFSA and RRSP. Don't forget about the RRSP. You get that $2,000 kind of grace amount that you don't get the deduction for, but you don't um, have to pay a penalty on. So that is gonna be part of your calculation, but that is something that you're gonna have to memorize for the exam. Okay, next, I found my little note card because I did memorize it and I hope I got it right. Um, it was uh, make sure to memorize the calculation for borrowing to invest. What is the cost? So, you know, this is, I feel like on one of the practice exams and they do go into it um, quite a bit in the textbook. So make sure to read because there's, or even some of the, like the practice little mini quizzes um, that you review after each chapter, but I wrote my little notes here. Make sure to read that section on what uh, is the cost if you borrow money to invest because you're gonna do that calculation that is in there and you're gonna wanna know it by heart. Okay, next, and this is more in the estate planning section, um, not a formula, but you're just gonna have to memorize the things that flow through an estate or do not flow in an estate. So, you know, if someone dies, um, what are things that are not gonna have to go through probate? 
those are things that you're gonna need to know because I gar I'm, I swear there's like one or two questions. All right, here's a question that I for sure got wrong because they're just, you know, at a certain point, your brain's just not gonna recall everything that you memorized. Capital needs analysis for insurance. So there was definitely a question on so-and-so needs life insurance. Do a capital uh, needs analysis with all of this information from their, um, you know, their, their income and all that kind of stuff. I just guessed because I just, at that point, I'm like, nope, brain can't compute. It cannot recall and can't do it can't do it. Um, with that said, I should definitely do a video on that in the future. All right. There's also at least one question about um, old age security and the benefit amount that you can get. I can't remember if it was knowing the calculation, which is simply um, what is the maximum OAS that you can get divided by 40 times the number of years that you lived in Canada. There's the formula. I don't remember if it was that or it was asking you um, to say, if this person would be eligible for OAS because they left the country. But with that said, that does remind me that there are one or possibly two questions about um, if you decide to retire and then you leave Canada, are you still eligible for OAS and GIS, a guaranteed income supplement? So make sure to review those sections um, because that is definitely on the exam now that I remember it. Oh yeah, here there were at least one or two questions about this types of tenancy. And I feel like that was something that I struggled with because I don't think they were on my big note cards, but they should have been. It's important to understand what the difference between like joint tenancy and tenancy in common and the other one. <laughs> Memorize what those are and what the differences are between all of them because that is definitely on the exam. Oh yeah, here's another question and I don't, I think I got it right, but it was near the end of the exam and I'm like, oh, what, damn it. And then you start, you know, you know when you're like, you get a question that you know you should know, and then you cannot, you don't know for sure, and then you just question everything that you have ever known. Uh, there is a question on what the difference between fundamental and technical analysis is. I think I got it right, but I don't know. They're really good with the with making it tricky. Okay, so those are some of the things that I definitely remember were part of the exam, but there are lots of things that I spent a lot of time memorizing and I don't think they were on the exam like I spent quite a bit of time memorizing the difference between a SERP and an RCA a supplemental executive retirement plan and a retirement compensation arrangement I don't think that was on the exam bit of a waste of time I also tried I didn't spend that much time on it but was really worried that there was going to be a lot of questions about car loans you know there was all those um that oh, i hated that section about you know borrowing to buy a car or leasing a car and all the different calculations and terminology i didn't i don't remember one question about cars thank goodness because i don't have a car and i just don't care i just don't care i mean i literally tried to memorize this and then i at a certain point i'm like you know what nah if i get that wrong get it wrong there's too much there's too much. Uh, also, I don't know why, but I memorized all of the EI premiums from 2019 to 2022, just in case they asked for a specific year. And I was just like, wasn't sure if it was just gonna be 2019. Yeah, they're not gonna ask you what EI premiums were for any of those years. It's not gonna be a question. So don't even bother. Similarly, there, thank goodness, is not gonna be a question uh, about dollar weighted versus uh, time weighted returns. Again, I tried to memorize them. Okay, just a few things I want to leave you with. Um, definitely do the practice exams. Definitely. Also, I'm going to show you right now because I'm a crazy person, this little study guide, and I will make it available for you to just to download. You can customize it, do whatever you want, but I made a little study spreadsheet so it can make it a little bit easier just to, to keep track of the chapters that I read. Did I do the, the, you know, read the putting it to work section of each chapter. Uh, did I highlight things, all that kind of stuff. Um, I'll share that with you and hopefully you enjoy it. It did help, actually help me keep on track with things. So that is really it. And I'm sure that's plenty. Um, but for the people who are like looking for this information because they're studying, I'm sure you're like, thank you for this. Because believe me, I was Googling, does anyone have any info on FB2? There's nothing, hardly anything hardly anything. So hopefully this was uh, helpful. And I wish you the best of luck on taking the exam. And if you fail, it's okay. Because your gal Jessica also failed, but then she passed the second time. So give yourself some grace. It's okay to fail. Just get back on that horse 
and ride it into the sunset. So thanks again for watching. Make sure to like this video, comment if you have any questions, subscribe if you haven't already subscribed, and I will see you in my next video.